Today, a venomous project kicks off Extreme 4x4 as Ian and Jesse build a poison spider rock rod. Plus, it's the equivalent to Bike Week in Daytona. We'll go to Moab's Easter Jeep Safari. Extreme 4x4 starts now. Welcome to Extreme 4x4 and our most ambitious project yet. We've been thinking about what we've been missing from our build list. We got Cheap Jeep, we got AJ, our ultimate Jeep. We pulled a Ranger out of a wrecking yard and we're building a Baja truck out of that. That's going pretty well. And we even threw in a couple tow rigs just for the hate mail. <laughs> but when you start planning your own rig, you begin to seriously think about a tube chassis. Like this one that we had brought in from Poison Spider Customs. Now you can build your own frame and a few years ago that was your only choice. But you run the risk of it not working and plus you're going to spend hours or even days and months building and designing one of these things. But why go through all that when you can buy one for $3,900? You know it's going to be square, you know it's going to be straight, level and it's actually going to work. That's why nowadays a pre-built chassis is a great option. Clifton Slay is the owner of Poison Spider Customs, manufacturer of all sorts of crawler accessories including stingers, bumpers, even turnkey buggies and cages. Hey, I'm Jesse. Clifton and spider fabricator Timmy Turner made the trip from Denver, Colorado to personally deliver our Bruiser chassis to Extreme. These guys built awesome rigs like their latest here, Suicide Sally. Ours may not be as spiffy, but with the hardest part finished, we set out to build a competent trail rig. One with bulletproof axles, custom forelink, and plenty of power that will hopefully make the designer proud. I can't wait to see what you guys make of it. I'm sure it's going to be an awesome machine. And uh, we'll be back and we'll see you on the trail. <laughs> Our Bruiser 8 chassis is constructed with inch and three quarter DOM tubing and comes welded complete with winch mounts and shock mounts. Now the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to slip the engine, transmission, and transfer case in there, and then we're going to start planning to get this thing sitting on some diffs. And for those of you who are wondering when we're going to show you how to swap out gears, well, today is the day. For the drivetrain goodies, we decided to go with the crate engine and a crate transmission from GM Performance. We flipped through the catalog and chose a V8 LS1 because it delivers a good torque curve that peaks at 365 at 4,000 RPM, and because it's aluminum, it'll give us a good power to weight ratio. Now behind that LS1, we're going to be slipping in this 4L65E electronically controlled transmission. Now this is a great trans to put in behind a small block, and it's a four speed unit with a 3.08 first gear for slow speed crawling, but it also has a .07 overdrive for when you really want to fly through the dunes. Now the best thing about one of these packages from GM Performance is that this isn't some wrecking yard find that someone rebuilt and crated up. This is a brand new engine with all the newest stuff right off the assembly line. The next item to be going on our rock rod is a transfer case. We wanted to stick with our crate theme, so we went to advanced adapters for an Atlas II. And since the Bruiser will be spending most of its life on the rocks, we went with the ultimate low 5.0 gear ratio, which means that when I spin the input shaft, the output shaft will spin five times slower than the input, giving us speed reduction and torque increase. So with the transmission in first gear, we'll get a gear ratio of about 15 to 1. And of course, Advance sent us all the adapter plates that we need to get this bolted up to our transmission. Look, my head fits right through there. And it fits back through there. That's even better. <laughs> now it's time to start mapping out our motor mounts and the transmission cross member. And the LS1 has excellent bosses making this a fabricator's dream. Because I can mount them here, here, or even here. So I got a lot of options to choose from. I will cut out quarter inch plate for the engine mounts. Then with the holes laid out, I'll drill them using the drill press. Then cut the tubes for the urethane spring eye bushing we got from Prothane. I'm gonna finish
finish welding this piece all together while it's bolted onto the engine and onto the frame because this frame is going to act like a jig and not allow it to twist from the heat of the welding. Now if I were to finish welding it out on the table, it would deflect and when I would try to line these bolts back up, they wouldn't line up and that would really suck. With the engine firmly on its mounts, I'm going to hang the transmission and the transfer keys off this ratchet strap. Then I'm going to go ahead and take one piece of tubing and run it underneath for the mount. By the time we get back from the brake, this entire drivetrain is going to be sitting in this chassis. Extreme Poison Spider build. We've already dropped in our Wicked drivetrain that consists of an LS1, a 4L65E transmission, and an Atlas II transfer case. And now it's time to deal with the axles. Now we've been opening a lot of crates on this project, so why stop now? Well, because you asked us to. You wanted to know when we were going to do a boneyard axle buildup. So here they are, a couple Dana 60s that we got from Condon's Auto Parts, a great source for used four-wheel drive parts. And we're going to build these what we consider bomb-proof axles. But before we put gears in this front axle, it needs a little work first. So I'm going to tear into the rear axle, and I'm going to replace the carrier with this Detroit locker we got from Track Tech, and then I'm going to spin that with some 513 gears we got from Superior Axle and Gear. Now these gears will give us a great bottom end run, but with our tire combination we'll still have half decent top end speed. Now a differential is a mysterious item, and these gears are the first part of the puzzle as to what goes on inside that diff. As you drive your truck, power from the engine is split in two and sent to either wheel by the differential. Whether you have an open diff or a locker, the real work inside the diff happens when you turn a corner and the wheels have to travel at different speeds. While the gear reduction and power splitting are handled by the ring gear and drive pinion, the differential action uses the side gears and pinion gears, sometimes referred to as spider gears. The ring and drive pinion are still turning the same speed, but with the spider gears working their way around the side gears, the input speed is divided between both wheels, allowing them to travel at different speeds. The Detroit Locker replaces those spider gears with a spider and clutch assembly that's going to maximize traction, but it's still going to allow for that differential action. Now, replacing a ring and pinion may seem like a big job, but trust me, if you can rebuild an engine, you can easily swap a set of gears. With the rear 60 on jack stands, I will pull the axle shafts, then pop out the carrier. When starting with an existing gear set, I like to check the feel of the pinion rotating torque. Then pop out the pinion gear and remove the bearing races. Now here's a trick when you're doing this job. You're going to have to press that new bearing onto the pinion. So I'm going to take this old bearing and I'm going to cut the cage off of it. A pair of side cutters. And I'm going to peel it open and pull all the rollers off. Then I'm going to use this inner part on top of the new pinion with a piece of tubing to press that new bearing on. Now the carrier, the shims to set bearing preload go between the side bearings and the carrier themselves. Now we're going to have to take this apart and put it together a whole lot during this setup. So I'm going to take the old bearings, I'm going to grind out the inside with a die grinder until they fit on and off and we can take it apart easier. Check the fit on the setup bearings install the new ring on the Detroit locker and torque the bolts to 110 foot-pounds. Place the new Detroit locker into the rear axle and using a dial indicator move the carrier back and forth. This is the total amount of shims we need, 78 thousandths of an inch. With that number recorded, install the pinion bearings. Install the pinion shims into the carrier, followed by the bearing race. And install the pinion into the rear axle and check the rotating torque. With the pinion in place, we will set the carrier in the housing and move it back and forth again, measuring in the same location with the dial indicator. This will tell us how many shims are needed on the ring gear side of the carrier. With the carrier removed, we pull the setup bearings and place 50 thousandths worth of shims on the ring gear side. 
Then the remaining 38 thousandths plus 15 thousandths for bearing preload are installed on the opposite side. With the bearing caps torqued, we're going to go ahead and check backlash using a dial indicator. Now you want between 4 and 9 thousandths of an inch worth of play between the ring and the pinion. Now if you have too much backlash, you take a shim from this side of the carrier and move it to this side, and that will move your ring gear closer to the pinion. If you have too little of backlash, you take a shim from this side of the carrier and move it to this side, moving that ring gear away from the pinion. Once you have the correct backlash, we can check the gear tooth pattern with the paint, and if everything looks good, we take it all back apart, put the new bearings on the carrier, and assemble it for good. While Ian was dealing with that rear axle, I went ahead and started stripping this front 60 by drilling out these spot welds and as soon as I pull out the axle tubes we can go ahead and start planning our custom width front axle. With the front axle tubes gone and the gear setup looking good, spider will be crawling soon. But up next, these spiders are weaving their web through Moab for the annual Easter Jeep Safari. Stay tuned. Got an idea for the show? Drop us a line at Extreme4x4TV.com. Welcome back, people. We're in the middle of our Poison Spider build. We've dropped in a killer drivetrain into our pre-built chassis, and we're in the process of rebuilding some junkyard axles. This thing's going to turn out to be a truly competent trail rig, something that we could take out to Moab's Easter Jeep Safari. For 29 years, Moab, Utah has hosted the Easter Jeep Safari. Where thousands of drivers take their rigs and do what else? Go wheeling. There we go. Each time you come out here, you're seeing better built rigs, better technology. To me, it's like the Sturgis of, of off-roading. It's a, a year's worth of work that you get a release in a week's time. <laughs> Southern Utah is known for breathtaking scenery, thousands of miles of trails, and that infamous Moab Slick Rock. The name is a little tricky. Slick Rock came, came from the old days when they were riding horses with the metal shoe horses, so that was slicking. This way it works way better with the, with the rubber tires. It actually gives us quite a lot of traction. Might actually be a handicap because if you're not too good of a driver, the rock will uh, still pull you through. Clifton Slay is one of the most well-known builders in the world, and he's been tearing up this rock for 15 years. Out here, you will see everything. It's awesome. This year, Clifton led the Extreme 4x4 TV and Dirt Sports Magazine Hardcore Run. This one proved so tough, even Clifton's suicide sally met its untimely demise. I'm not happy. We didn't know what it would take to actually break it, and uh, now we know. Not everyone who comes to Moab wants to leave broke, and Skyjacker had the perfect run for them. The Steel Bender Trail has some challenging sections, and that gave Skyjacker a chance to show off its new rock-ready line. It is made such that it can overcome any of the obstacles that you would face off the trail. You get the opportunity to be able to sit back, and just enjoy the scenery without being overstressed about the vehicle making it over that obstacle and you're able to continue on and see all that's out here to see. For 20 miles, the technical trail tested these rigs, but the Skyjacker suspension handled it with ease. I think that's probably the most exciting part of this trail ride is that we can actually see our, you know, all our suspension out here and it's, it is, it's doing a great job and I think it kind of speaks for itself. So we're real excited about that. Over at the New Rock Crawling Park, pro crawlers Kevin McLaughlin and Becca Webster were breaking in Pro Comp's newest rubber. We're doing tire testing for Pro Comp tires, new SRC uh, super sticky rubber compound. As you know, in every type of racing, rubber is probably one of the most intricate part of the vehicle. And the super stickies were just that. They worked awesome. Uh, it was unbelievable how they're hooking up. The tire just seems to be grabbing. I don't know. I don't know what they do. I don't design the tires, but whatever they did, it works. Whether running it hard or just enjoying nature, for the thousands that make the annual trip to Moab, it's all about the love of getting in a four-wheeler and hitting the trail. And after all, it's Mother Nature. You got a motor, you're out here having fun, a great lunch, and a good bunch of people to be with. So it's really fun.
Ian, would you like to remind me and everybody else that's watching why we weren't there? Well, first of all, we were working, and second of all, since everything we've built isn't finished yet, we'd probably be laughed off the trails if we showed up driving these. <laughs> well, next year the poison spider will be done, so we'll be out wheeling with you all. But it won't get done till we do some more work, so check back after the break. We're going to tear back into that thing. Ready? Yep. Go. For more information on anything you've seen today, check us out online, Extreme4x4TV.com. Welcome back to Extreme 4x4. Our rear 60 has a new Detroit locker and set of superior gears in there. I'm going to pull out these old axle shafts so we can measure them and have Superior make us some new 35 spline units. Then we can go ahead, get this axle on some tires, get it underneath the back of the chassis so we can start measuring for links. We went to Nitto Tire for these 38 by 15 and a half mud grapplers. These have always been a great off-road tire thanks to their computer designed tread pattern and their super thick side lugs. And they've been working on the rubber compounds so they're biting really awesome on the rocks. We wrapped those tires around a set of 20 by 10 Mickey Thompson Classic 2s that we got online from National Tire and Wheel. Now these are a fully polished aluminum wheel and they have steel inserts in the lug holes for extra strength at the flange. With the axle back here, we can go ahead and start figuring out our ride height, axle center line, and then we can start planning out our four-link system. Ready? Yep. A link suspension is something that we could honestly do an entire show on, and we will later on. But for this chassis, we have the ability to look at other bruisers and talk to other builders to get a good starting point. With the approximate measurements that we just took, I entered them into our four-link calculator, which states that we have about a 30% anti-squat. Now, what's anti-squat? Well, when you push on your gas, your rear end squats down. So if you have a lot of anti-squat, you're going to have a lot of axle wrap and a lot of wheel hop. Now, if I move those front upper links down one inch, it's going to change the entire geometry and giving us about a 4% anti-squat, which is almost zero. So that's a good neutral zone for us to start because we can always change those links at any time. Now, if you want to go ahead and use this system, it's going to be on our website after the show. Now before we even think about a link system for the front of this truck, we're actually going to need an axle. Now this center section is going to be the beginning of an ultimate front axle for this truck. And I'm just going to set it in place on these jack stands so we can get an idea of what kind of tube links we're going to need. That four link calculator also measures leak links for us. So we're going to be using DOM tubing with tubing adapters. And once I get all of these welded in, I'm going to be putting in three quarter inch heim joints that we got from QA1. They got a Teflon block for lubrication and they're heat treated for heavy duty applications. With the links in there, we can check everything and then burn it into place. And the next week we'll get in the front end, we'll plumb it, we'll wire it, and hopefully we'll get it running. Same extreme time, same extreme channel. Thank you, Batman.